Amanda Maranatha of Detroit, Michigan, where everything depends upon a proper understanding of Genesis 3.15, where the Most High God said to the serpent, I will put enmity between you and the woman. Her seed's heel will bruise your seed's skull. Why is it that people cannot understand the femininity of God? Why cannot, why can't people understand that God has a helpmate, a wife, a partner? It's because they do not understand or have considered the Proto-Evangelium. The Proto-Evangelium is the first gospel. It is the gospel of Genesis 3.15, where the Most High God is preaching Christ crucified. God is going to send his son, and his son is going to be crucified. That is the sign unto Israel, so that you will know that he is God. It's not so much that you will know that he is God because Christ was crucified, but what does God do three days later? He resurrects him. And for all of those who wish to be raised from the dead need to follow not only God, but God's mediator, God's messenger. For in Exodus, he says, behold, I will send you an angel. Do whatever he says. He will forgive you of your sins. Don't provoke him. Now, if God says that and you don't listen to his messenger, what does that say of you and your security of your salvation? What does it say that you, you recognize the son, but you do not recognize the mother? Yeah, you say, Lord, Lord, I have not done this in your name and haven't I read this book in your name and made a video in that name yeah but when you fail to recognize the mother God's wife wisdom El Shaddai the Holy Spirit the angel of the Lord the queen of heaven I am the burning bush when you fail to recognize who she is you put your salvation in jeopardy for Christ himself said, you can deny me, but you cannot deny the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the mate of God. When it says, let us create man in our image, male and female, he created he them. The femininity of the woman of mankind of flesh personified the image of the spiritual mother. Just because I say father, I hope that you don't recognize exclusively that a father is only physical. Or you cannot be a father if you're spiritual. Or if you cannot be a father if you're made of spirit. See, God is our father and he is in heaven. If he's our father, then where would our mother be? Behold, I seen a sign, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and she was with child, the queen of heaven. If God is our king, Christ is the prince, then who is the queen of heaven? It's God's wife. What the Catholic Church has done is that they've made the woman of Genesis 3.15 exclusively to be Mary. And they made her to be Mary from their eyes, from the from the Acts of Maccabees where it says that the Gentiles painted their images onto the likeness of the Israelites. Mary was not a European. If you make Mary the woman of Genesis 3.15, then her child would be also a European. This gospel, this prophecy, this message, this Torah was only given to Israel. All of the other nations are spittle, dung unto the Most High God, the Father. 
God is the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That is who the covenant is made for and their descendants. Until the Gentiles repent, nothing is going to get better. This God, our father, is a God of mercy. And he wishes all men to be saved. Now you can say all Israelites or you can say or, or include the Gentiles as well. But if you include the Gentiles, all the Gentiles have to do is submit and repent. Claim what is true. Who are the true descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Because Revelations 2 says that there are Jews that say they're Jews, but are of the synagogue of Satan. Jewish, ish is a kind of, ish. Is a suffix to personify kind of childish, blackish, Jewish. The true Israelites are of blood. The true historical Israelites are of blood. The new children of the Most High are of spirit. But that just doesn't mean that. The Gentiles are included in this uh, in this family. See, if you want to be a part of the family, you have to obey the Ten Commandments. And bearing a false witness, that's a violation of the Ten Commandments. If you if you do not accept Christ who has come into the flesh, and that flesh happened to be a melanated black brown, red, rooty, Adam type of flesh and his hair was of wool and you continue to personify Christ as with European features that's bearing a false image an image of a beast now Gentiles shouldn't be offended when the, the term beast is personified with other nations that's what God said if you have a problem with what God said, you know, take it up with God, not with me. But the image of the beast is not so much an Im image of an elephant or a donkey or a hyena. The image of the beast is to deny that Christ came into a flesh that unfortunately everyone, you know, they repel, they, they, they hate, they detest. But that's part of the curse because the Israelites did not obey God's commandments. These are the curses of Deuteronomy 28. But when you are able to rightly divide the word of God and you want to become part of the family, it's cool to recognize the son. Uh, you know, he's the Messiah, the savior of the world, even though Israel was the world to God only. He's not trying to save the whole world and all of the other nations. He's only trying to save Israel. Israel is an apple to his eye. Only Israel. But, when, but the Gentiles, when they recognize that Christ is the son and they recognize that God is the father, but they detest the mother because mama's baby, daddy's maybe. See, everybody is saying that, you know, God impregnated, what, Mary? And that right there is a violation of the Torah because it says each flesh is to unite with its own kind. God being flesh is now going to hook up with Mary, who is a flesh. Isn't that somewhat of the uh, direct violation that God uh, imprisoned the fallen angels for? The fallen angels supposed, supposedly, supposedly had sex with humanity in uh, Genesis 6. That's how the Gentiles interpret it. And they produced the Nephilim. That's how they interpret it. Well, how can God be a just God if God impregnated Mary? If God sent down an angel and, and this angel said, Behold, Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed be fruit of thy womb and blessed be... Uh, look, 
The angel was giving Mary a woman a salutation. Yes, Mary was part of Genesis 3.15, but Mary was not exclusively the woman of Genesis 3.15. For the woman of Genesis 3.15 is God's wife. Isaiah 34, 16. Seek ye out the book of the Lord, for none shall want her mate. Who is she? And who is she mating with? The father has one wife. Hear, O Israel, our Lord, our God is Echad, Yaqed. Deuteronomy 6 4. The Hebrew word is plural. People have a hard time with that. Have eyes to see, but can't see. Ears to hear, but can't hear. If you're truly of the Father, then you will hear his voice. You will hear his frequency. God is a speaker. He speaks things to life. He speaks things to fulfillment. His word does not come back void. So if the proper interpretation of the scriptures are correct, who was the fulfiller of Genesis 3.15? Because it came out of God's mouth. God said it. Do you understand it? Scripture is not up to private interpretation. It is only through the flesh of Christ that you will be able to understand who he is and who the God is. Anybody who does not accept Christ coming into the flesh is an antichrist. Which flesh did Christ come into? Was it a black flesh or a Chinese flesh? Does this offend you? Because, brothers, behold, God has consecrated for us a new and living way. That is a, the veil that is his flesh. Hebrews 10, 19. If Christ came into the flesh of a black man, the genealogy of Joseph, the genealogy of Mary, and these people were a.k.a. black and you accept, you teach you understand believe everything that is contrary to that you know, all I'm saying is if you see your brother sinning a sin that doesn't lead to death point it out to him you have to determine if the sin leads you to death is it a lie? is it idolatry? Are you, when you accept the European Christ, are you now worshiping on Sunday instead of the Sabbath? When you accept this lie, are you doing Easter and cutting down trees and ordaining it with silver and gold as those who accept the Gentile depiction of Christ? Who do men say that I am? Better yet, who does God say that he is? Was he the fulfiller of Genesis 3.15? Because there are many Christ that come into this world. Many are proclaiming to be Christ, to be uh, the Messiah. But there was only one true Messiah. And that true Messiah fulfilled Genesis 3.15 where David, the mighty man of God, understood Genesis 3.15 and he fulfilled it by cutting off Goliath's head. And he took it to Jerusalem and he buried it. A thousand years later, Yeshua is born. 33 years later, Yeshua, Freemasonically, Yeshua is crucified on a hill called Golgotha, the place of a skull. Some would say that this is esoteric knowledge. No, this is just rightly dividing the word of God. And God has said that he will reveal the information to Israel. 
You can understand a lot of things when you understand Genesis 3.15, the masculine and the femininity of God, the us, the plurality. Just because it says that God alone, God is alone as far as him being the father. He is the head. There's no one else beside him as far as being the alpha God. But he has a beta God. He has a feminine God. He has a counterpart because we are made in his image. And for anyone to say that God has not created anything in his image is a liar. And if God has created, if Elohim has created something in their image, male and female, and you still deny the femininity of the God, the Elohim, that's on you. That's taking God's name in vain. You are saying your understanding is higher, better, more proficient, more prolific than God himself. Who do men say that I am? When mama was talking to Moses, it was mama, the burning bush. Moses asked, what was the father's name? Mama told Moses, it's I am that I am. Mama told Moses, my name is I am. When Christ comes into the New Testament and he's saying that I am, he's not saying that he's the father. He is saying that he is the son of the woman of Genesis 3.15. Mama's name is in, is part of the father. If my last name was Butler and you met my wife and you didn't know her first name, what would you call her? Miss Butler. If my name is I am that I am and you don't know my wife's first name, what would you call her? Miss I am. I am the man of Marianatha of Detroit, Michigan, where everything depends upon a proper understanding of Genesis 315. Peace.